What's going on everybody, it is the one and only Q here from Retro Q Gaming and unfortunately we have to start off this week with a little bit of a negative news coming out of NVIDIA. Now, real quick before we get any further, this video is going to be fairly complex and fairly confusing and fairly technical, especially with all the names, the certifications and whatnot too. So, I'm going to try to keep it as simple as possible, but given what we're dealing with, it might be a little bit confusing unless you're up on exactly what we're talking about. Anyway, what are we talking about? Well, we're talking about NVIDIA's new quiet change to one of their certification standards, which unfortunately will downgrade all the products involved with it. And it will allow lower quality products to receive the same certification. Now, first off, what are we talking about here? G-Sync is the important one. G-Sync is NVIDIA's primary technology to use variable refresh rate. It's done in several different ways, but essentially it will make your monitor match your, your graphics card in whatever refresh rate slash frame rate it's pushing out to avoid screen tearing and the massive drops that can be caused via V-Sync. Originally, this was only possible with an NVIDIA GTX or RTX graphics card and a proper G-Sync module inside a certified monitor. And that's where this all starts to get confusing. Because of how the G-Sync standard was evolving, last year at CES 2020, NVIDIA unveiled their new roadmap, if you will. There are three different levels of certification for G-Sync. At the bottom entry level stuff, you had G-Sync compatible monitors, which were monitors that would have been capable of G-Sync based on the refresh rate, the response time, etc., but did not have a G-Sync module inside them. However, they could still avail of almost the same quality using the GeForce graphics card. Then you had the regular G-Sync standard above that, which is pretty much the same thing, but it has a physical G-Sync module inside it. Therefore, you wouldn't have any of the issues and it's going to work perfectly 100% with it. And with how everything had been changing with the move to 4K, with graphics cards along the likes of my RTX 3090, ones that can actually push 4K resolution, native 4K resolution, ones that can actually push high frame rates at the same time, and of course, the move to include HDR. NVIDIA came out with a new G-Sync standard at the top end called G-Sync Ultimate. Now, the important thing about G-Sync Ultimate is that this required a minimum level of HDR to receive this certification. HDR comes in many shapes and forms. The usual standards are HDR 400, HDR 600, HDR 800, and HDR 1000, otherwise known as HDR 10. There's a couple of other ones out there as well, like Dolby Vision and all that, but these go off the VESA standard, which is HDR 400, 600, 800, and 1000. Now, 1000 is very high. 1000 is, the, is what you're going to find on high-end monitors and good TVs. And the G-Sync Ultimate standard required not only a physical G-Sync module in the monitor, but it also required HDR above HDR 1000. A prime example of what fit the old G-Sync Ultimate standard is the monitor that was revealed last year at CES 2020 by Asus. It was the monitor I was personally looking to buy all of last year. However, given what we've seen this year at CES, it looks like the monitor has probably been cancelled. And the new version of it is a bit of a downgrade. If you want to look it up, you can check all the specs for yourself. It is the Asus Republic of Gamers Swift PG32UQX. Not to be confused with the new one that was just announced last week, which is the same model pretty much exactly, it's just a PG32UQ. There is no X in the new model. And the reason why the old one was so fantastic is that not only did it have physical G-Sync module included inside it, but it had the HDR1400 standard. And the reason why is that because it was so high, it was designed to be able to replicate the variance of Dolby Vision, which is typically factored around the 1200 nits mark but Dolby have it tuned a very fine specific way. So a comparative version on the VESA HDR standard would be roughly 1400. And this monitor looked fantastic. I couldn't wait for it at all. It was going to be brilliant. However, this is where the problem all comes in. NVIDIA have changed the definition of G-Sync Ultimate and their required standards now. Remember, it specifically listed a minimum requirement of over 1000 HDR. Whereas with the new standard, 
it's muddied a little bit more and now it's just listed as lifelike HDR. And since NVIDIA have not provided a clearly defined explanation of all this and what is required for the certification, we can only assume it's as low as maybe any type of HDR, HDR 400 possibly. In fact, right now there is one new monitor announced with HDR Ultimate, or should I say G-Sync Ultimate, and this one does not have above 1000, but instead it has HDR 600. So this is one that would not have previously been certified as HDR Ultimate, or G-Sync Ultimate, I should say. This new monitor is the Alienware 38-inch curved AW3821DW. And as a quick comparison, the new Asus monitor that I talked about that was released last week, or was announced last week, is likely going to be G-Sync Ultimate certified, but it only has a much, much lower level of HDR. It's not even 1000, let alone 1400. So the way I see this is a change for marketing reasons. If you lower the requirements to just lifelike HDR that includes any type of HDR from 400 and above, it allows more monitors to be certified as this so they can be sold as G-Sync Ultimate. Now, of course, that doesn't mean that something like the top end 1400 nit version is just going to be excluded from any of this. It just means on the previous standard, you would have had a much higher end pool of monitors with said certification. For example, there's an Acer monitor out at the moment that has the old G-Sync Ultimate and 1400 nits. It's one of their Predator gaming series. But for now, all we can do is sit and wait. Hopefully NVIDIA will explain the whole situation. They'll clarify it all. I've actually tried to contact Asus just fairly recently as of around last week when the new monitor was announced. And I was trying to find out anything about their previous one, which they even bragged about winning an award about, but haven't released and have possibly canceled. But that's it for the moment. All I can say is now I have to be extra vigilant and I encourage everyone else to be extra careful when looking into and researching a new monitor to buy for your lovely RTX 3080 whenever you can manage to get your hands on one.